Welcome everybody to our, these are our optional uh, meetings that I'm going to be doing for us that are going to be looking at labs. So I'm going to do labs and I'm also going to do some, uh, talk about some gotchas because there's some gotchas in some of these labs that will uh, kind of get you in trouble at times. Um, today I backed all the way up to, to chapter 15 or chapter 10 or module 10 because um, our hands-on final, one of the things you're going to learn about our hands-on final you're going to have it's going to look very similar to something like this right here. All right. So uh, if you're looking, it's uh, uh, two switch to a router switch and two PCs. This is going to be very, very similar to what you've got to do for your hands on final. So be able to, to be able to do this, one of the first things you've got to be able to do is to configure initial router settings. So I want to go ahead and download uh, this particular packet tracer and open it up. And I'm going to show you that in most of our modules, what happens is the student is given a packet tracer, and that packet tracer gives them the uh, all the commands needed to do the lab, just basically by by hands on walking them through it. Then after that, there's typically some type of lab that requires real gear that you use in order to do the lab. So. We're going to walk through this uh, packet tracer, and then we're going to jump over to our uh, NetLab system and look at that lab there, and then we'll jump back over into another packet tracer so that we can actually um, look at how your students would be doing this. So the first thing we we'll do is obviously in module 10 is open up this packet tracer, which is configure initial router settings, and it talks about how to establish a console connection. Now I showed you in class during one of our, our classes, I showed you how we take um, console cables and we connect them to the back of our, our devices. Now, we do have, again, on some of our devices, we now have these, I'll put it in front of my face, there we have these USB connections like this. But most, that's on routers, most Cisco routers and switches, um, all of them will have this. They will have an RJ45 console connection that you can use. So. What we're doing in this first packet tracer is simulating putting a console cable from this PC to R1. Now, an interesting thing happened. Uh, someone mentioned to me they were doing a packet tracer physical mode lab, and they deleted the packet, the, the console cable that was had been hanging on the pegboard. I tried everything I could, and I could not find a way to, to get a new console cable. Now, normally you just go down here to your components, to your connection. Make sure I am. Make sure I am actually recording. Yes, I am. Okay. Normally, you go down here to your connections, and you can just grab a new console cable. But if you're in packet tracer physical mode, and you delete it, if it lets you delete it, uh, I couldn't figure out a way to get it back. Now, the other thing I found out is it actually wouldn't let me delete it from the pegboard. So what may have actually happened is it was connected to a different device or had been laid on the table. Um, if you get in that position and you're doing a packet tracer, you can always reset the activity. The problem is you're gonna lose all your work up to that point. Um, so you need to be careful of that. But for this, the first item is choose a console cable. So this is the console. By the way, if you just roll over these, it will tell you exactly what these are. So that's a console that is a straight through. If you happen to not know, you can click the one that says choose automatically from connection type. Um, on this particular lab, it's locked, but on some of them, it will let you actually use it. But I, we need to learn. Here's a console. We'll go to the PC, connect it to our RS-232, and then connect that over to the console port on the PC, on the router. We then can open up the PC, go to our desktop, click on Terminal, and set up 9600-8-in-1, click OK, and now we're inside the simulated router. And of course, I get in class and the phone starts ringing. All right. So now I'm in this router and it says enter privilege mode. If we remember this, which is a little small, but you can see it, this has the alligator mouth. This is what we call user exec mode. So this is where I can look, but I can't make any changes. If I do a question mark, you'll see there's only one page of really possible commands. If I go enable and go into privileged exec mode, you'll notice now that there's almost a page and a half of commands. Now, this is a simulation. If I go back over here to a real router, all right, so if I go back to my actual router, I got so many things open here, folks. 
go back over here to a real router and click on this real router inside of here. If I do a question mark on user exec mode, you'll notice there's about a page, two pages of, of information. If I type enable, oops, if I type it correctly and spell it right, um, it will actually, now I can do shift control six and then X to try to break out of this. Shift control six, X. Typically I just have to wait until it breaks out. Control six, X. I'll let it break out six, X. It's gonna time out here in a second. I mistyped enable. I should have put in no IP domain dash lookup and it wouldn't be sitting here doing this. But I'll go in over here to this one, make it look that way. Be. So if I do a question mark here, you'll notice there's only like a page and a half. But if I go in enable, I'm now in privileged exec mode. So switches and routers have privileged exec modes. Now you'll see there's one page, there's two pages, there's three pages, and then almost three and a quarter pages of different commands that are available. So our simulated packet tracer network doesn't have as many commands as what a real router has, which you would expect that. Each router has a, and switch has a running config, which is a config that's running in RAM, and it has a startup config, which is what is saved in NVRAM. So if I do a show run right now, you'll see that I've got really nothing in this running config because I've done no configuration on it at all, all right? But if I wanna do a, a quick setup on this, you'll roll down here and it will show you exactly what you need to do. It says configure R1 as a host name. So I'm going to global config, config T, host R1. You'll notice how I'm getting percentage completion points again down here as I'm doing this. So there's R1. I'm gonna do um, privilege exec un unencrypted is Cisco and encrypted is it's a secret. Now this is one of the places I wish they would not even teach you this. Uh, inside of a Cisco device, there's two different types of enable passwords. There's the enable password and there's the enable secret password. This is a depreciated type of password we really shouldn't even be using that creates a password that is unencrypted. And then enable secret produces an encrypted privilege exec password. So on this particular example, it says set the unencrypted to Cisco. So I would type enable. I can type enable password and it would be Cisco. And then enable secret is the it's a secret. Make sure I spelled it right and I didn't. It's a secret. And you'll see I'm up to 40 percentage points. Now my banner message of the day, banner, MOTD, delineating character. So we're doing unauthorized. Now what up? Anybody remember what I told you about your banners? Real world, what should your banner say? Or who should make your banners? Who should create your banners for your networking devices? Your engineer? Well, your engineer needs to, but they need to do it based upon your security policy and talking to your lawyers because your banner may be used to prosecute someone who tries to break into or get illegal access or unauthorized access to your devices. So that banner has to survive a, a court challenge. So it's important that you think about that, that you actually look at it and say, hey, would this survive a court challenge? That's why most of these banners are created by lawyers instead of the network engineers. Okay. So now we can do, uh, at this point, we do a copy run start. So we could do a do copy. By the way, remember the do command lets me run a configure. If I try to run just copy run start here, it's going to say that that command is not, not known because it says, I don't know what that is. That's because that is a command that's usually not run in configuration mode. If you use the do command, it lets you run it and it will run that command and even though you're inside of configuration mode, all right? So now you'll see that as we go on down, um, we can look at these different items here. Now, if you're ever working on a, a lab and you don't know why you don't have 100%, again, click check results 
And then you can look at the packet tracer and you can say assessment items and say that the console line has not been set and the enable password is incorrect. So let's see what we can fix here. So we can't fix, uh, I didn't set the console. I know the console is wrong because I didn't set it. Um, so line con zero, login, password. Let's see what they want me to make the password for this. So let me in, okay? So let's go in here and we'll make that password let me in. So now we're 80% and let's see, it's saying that my enable secret password is wrong. I didn't do service password encryption either. So the enable password is wrong. So I must've mistyped it. So let's go back in here. The good news is since the- uh, Kelly, it's gonna say that until you do service password encryption. I, I sat there for 20 minutes trying to type it. Okay, and like, what I was getting ready to do was this. I was getting ready to do a do show run and then find out that I've got it set to Cisco, which is correct. And then now the reason it's giving you that is because Packet Tracer is a very, very literal uh, simulation device or simulation. So I go in here now and do service, password, encryption. It'll give me 100%. And the reason being, now if I do a do show run, it's looking for this to be the enable password, not Cisco. That's a little weird, but that, you know, that, that's why it's doing that. Sorry, I had that problem. But that's also why I wanted to show you this because that's one of those things that, that gives you the, uh, that's one of those gotchas that will get you if you're not careful. But now I'm at hundred percent. Now this is, what I call the, it gives you the, it hand holds you. It gives you all the little pieces to get you going. So that was, if we looked in our curriculum itself, all right, so we look in our curriculum here, that was the lab 1014, configure initial routing settings. As we move on down through this, our next lab would be basic device configuration. But before I go there, I'm gonna jump over to our lab 1044. Lab 1044 is a lab that's designed for you to do it inside of NetLabs. So what I wanna do again is make sure all of you are aware, NetLabs is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for you. If you want to do this lab, all you do is log into netlabs.stanley.edu with your, it's your um, entire email address. And if you haven't changed your password, the base password is Cisco123. Most of you've logged in now though, so it's been changed to something you've changed it to. You go to new lab reservation, schedule lab for myself. You will have a single class. You may be in two, but you're probably just in one right now. So click that class, find lab 1044, and then you pick any of the available pods. And remember, we have more than four pods. We have 16 pods available. You can just click the red arrow and that means right now. So I can click the red arrow or you can do it in the future. So if you knew you had time tonight at eight o'clock, you could schedule it at eight o'clock tonight. If you knew you had time Saturday night, you could go forward to Saturday night at you know 10 o'clock and you could set up a lab for Saturday. I just ask you to schedule it in the future. Make sure you use it if you can, all right? So I'm just gonna grab pod three. And the reason I've already got one, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this so you can just see me scheduling it. So now it's actually scheduled. The, I've also got something really neat with you. If any of you log into NetLabs right now, you will actually see this reservation. NetLabs has the ability for me to do a reservation for our entire class. So we can all be in this lab together at the exact same time so that I can say, okay, Tracy, put a password on this router. Okay, um, Ebenezer, Jelani, put one in here. Uh, Jelani, make sure, make, pronounce your name again for me, Jelani. It's Jelani. Jelani is correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. I just, I, I hate getting people's names wrong. I apologize. I get emails all the time from Miss Kelly called on. I had to go, well, actually. Um, so I, I, I apologize, Jelani. If I, if I do mispronounce it, please correct me because I, I, I hate doing that. But what I'm going to do, I'm logged in here. So I'm going to pull up my content. I'm just going to open it in a new window because I'm going to pull it out here and put it on this side. this over here. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take this and put this on this side. 
And so now we'll be able to have our lab on one side and the device on the other. So here's our lab. All right, so we're gonna build a switch and router network. Go ahead and tell you, this is very, very, very close to what's gonna be your hands-on final. I'll leave it at that. That's, 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 we'll go from there. But let's look, there's our, there's our setup. So we go down here and it talks about, the first thing we need to do is make sure the switch can uh, do both IPv4 and IPv6. So this is a command we have to enable. So go into config. I could do configure terminal. You know, I could write the whole thing out or I can use comp T, short for commit terminal. Now we're gonna do SDM prefer. Now, if you ever don't know a command, don't forget you can use the question mark, all right? So if I didn't even know SDM, I could do S question mark and I could look and go, uh, oh, that was SDM. Okay, question mark, prefer, all right, question mark. Hey, I need to support both IPv6 and IPv4. And then default, by the way, I knew when I did this and set in complete command that immediately tells me the following. It tells me to do this. It tells me to hit the up arrow, put a question mark at it and then see what the next item is. Cause it's just telling me I haven't finished the entire command. So now I've got that. I'm going to end it or exit. Either way, I could do also control Z drops me all the way out of all configuration modes. And I'm going to reload. So now I'm going to actually support IPv6 uh, on, um, on, the, on the switch. All right. So first thing, configure the IP address and default mask on PCA and PCB. So let's just go ahead and do that. So um, we go in here. We This is just a normal Windows PC. So nothing special here. We open up our network settings. Uh, we're going to go in here and we're going to go to our Ethernet. We're going to change our adapters options. And one thing uh, I will tell you that many people have not done, they haven't actually set an IPv6 address before. So let's go ahead and set our static IP addresses here. So it would be 192.168.1.1. Three. This is the PCA. It is slash 24. So it's 255.255.255.0. Now, what's my default gateway? It says 192.168.1.1. All right. So that's what we need there. Because if you look, that's the IP address of the router interface. It's as close to my router as I can get. It is also on the same network. We don't need a DNS server. So let's click OK. Then we're going to scroll down and we got to change our IPv6. So we're going to use an IPv6 address. All right. And for this one, I'm going to use 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD colon, by the way, that's short for Academy, Cisco Academy. ACAD colon one colon colon three. And then you go down and your prefix length is 64. So slash 64, that's our prefix length. And then we make our default gateway, uh, the actual, what's called the link local address. And we haven't gone over IPv6 yet, but uh, we will go over that um, in class actually next Monday. So FE, FE80 colon, colon, colon one. Right. So we've set that for PCA, so now let's go to PCB. We're gonna go in here and set this. And again, something that we don't do very often, that most people don't do very often, set a static IP address on a host anyway. Might do it on a server, might do it on a, uh, you know, you do it on routers and switches all the time, but on an actual host, unless it's a server, we don't typically put a static IP address, but it's something your students need to know how to do because it is something that has to be done on, on uh, servers. So 192.168. for PCB, 0 0.3, 24 bit mask, 192.168.0.1, because that is not only what is shown, but is what is needed. And we'll go down here to IPv6. Use 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD colon 
three, actually did just a cat colon colon three. So they had zero here, a cat colon colon three. All right, six will be F E. Now this is very confusing. Why am I using the same link local as the gateway for both? You're gonna learn that we're gonna put the same link local on both sides of the router because the link locals are only significant on that one link. They are not globally significant, They're only significant on that segment. Now, how would I check to see if my IP addresses have been applied on these PCs? Uh, oh, yeah. in command. Right. Yep, yeah, okay, so we open up the command prompt. So we click on the command prompt, we're doing IP config. Now this is a little hard to read, so I'm gonna try to expand this and make it um, actual size there. So actual size, so 2000, 192.168.03, okay, it's PCB, that is correct, 24-bit mask, gateway is correct. My uh, IPv6 address is 2001 DBA colon ACAD colon colon three. Yep, that's good. So we are good there. So let's go over to PCA and let's do it again for actual size. And then we can do an IP config and we'll see. So we got 2001 DBA ACAD colon one, colon, colon one. Oops, I have messed up. So let's go change our, our IPv6 address. So let me go back down here. I have messed up my IPv6 address. And that's why you check. Oops, cancel that. Oh, one. I have mistyped something in here. I have a, let me go back. Maybe I, maybe I was just reading that wrong. Yep. Yeah, I'm not supposed to have six on there. That's not right. Let's check our IPv6 settings and see what we mistyped here. Oh yeah, mistyped. So that is supposed to be for our PCA is supposed to be three. So one, three and zero, three. Okay, so I mistyped that one. I put in the completely wrong address. All right, so now let's go back over to our command prompt. Up there. There we go, 2001 DB8 colon ACAD colon one, colon colon three. All right, so we're good there. So step one's done. So now we're gonna configure our router. So we go to our router, hit enter a couple of times. We gotta go into configuration mode. So we first off type enable, and then the very first thing I'm gonna do is go config T and I'm gonna do no IP uh, domain, Dash lookup. That way, if I mistype something, I won't be sitting here all day. Um, domain lookup. I won't be sitting here all day um, trying to do uh, trying to do a DNS uh, configuration. So I got to define the, define the name. Let's see what our name is here. Our name is R1, I believe. We're just router R1. Okay, so we're going to give it a name. So host name is R1. We're then gonna go in and set up our, um, okay. So now we're gonna go in and set up, it says turn off DNS lookup. So we've already did that. We did no IP domain lookup. Um, we're gonna assign class as the privilege exec password. So enable secret class is our enable. We're gonna go into line con zero. Put in a special command I always put in called logging synchronous. And the reason I do this is because it keeps you from having to worry about when you return information onto the screen, it, it interrupting your typing. It just, it, it, you just need to get used to putting that in because it's a, a good one here. Password Cisco login. Okay, so my console is set up. And then align V2I. Remember that on a router, we only have five V2I lines instead of 15 or 16 really with a, with a switch. Now I'm lazy, so I'm gonna use the up arrows because I know I need to use the same password here and I need to set login. So I've now done that. 
Encrypt my passwords. Service password dash encryption. The tab key, by the way, works just like it does on any Linux box. Banner, B A M banner, M O T D. I'm just going to do a simple stay out. End it with my delimiter. All right. Turn on IPv6 to unicast routing. You don't do that. Uh, IPv6 will not route between both sides. And then I can set the clock if I want to. Set clock, question mark, clock set. Now, here's something interesting. You'll notice that when you try to do, if I'm trying to do clock here, you got clock. Okay, so I can do clock. And then you've got, you can set your time zones. One of the weird things about setting the clock, now, first off, I'm gonna back out of here. You'll notice that you actually set the clock outside of configuration mode, which is insane. Um, but it's just some remnant left over for whatever reason. That's the way Cisco's done it. Um, so we are at uh, 1531. Colon 59, actually 1532 just passed. So. Oh, I do date. So uh, month is the sixth. So actually day is the third. Month is the sixth. Oh, three, oh, six. Okay. Oh, do do. All right, so I'm having trouble with this one, folks. Should be so sick. There, June 20. 21. Finally. All right. So I set the clock. Now, all these changes I made to this particular router have all been made in the running config. So you'll see I've got a host name that I messed up. I didn't get an R1 on there, but I've got my host name. I've got all this stuff in here, but let me go fix my host name, host R1. Okay. So all that's there, but I don't have, if I do a show startup config, Look, none of it's there. So what I need to do to save it, I can do a copy running config to startup config, all right, which is the book answer. The real world answer is I do a WR for write. I do a write, which is a shortened form of copy run start. It just means write the um, configuration to memory. So real world, that's what 99.9% .9 of us use. You can actually use COP RS. RS. Okay. So you can actually get it down to a pretty small for copy run start. Um, but I, most of us just use WR. Okay. Now, if you tried to ping though, it's still not going to be successful because we have not placed IP addresses on the interfaces. So what we'll do now, so we're going to go in. And we're going to look at our, our interfaces here, interface G, G, G001, IP add 192.168.1.1. Now, I wish we could just put slash 24, but unfortunately, we cannot. We have to use the full thing. And the other thing that's different on a router from a switch is by default, the router ports typically are shut down. Now, these are not shut down. But on a normal router, if you get it out of the box and turn it on, the routers will have a command called shutdown on them. So we normally have to issue the no shutdown command on our router ports. And now for IPv6 address, just do IPv6 add. And this is gig001, so 200 colon db8 colon acad colon one colon colon one slash 64. 
and then we'll do IPV. And this is something else that's very different that we're gonna, we're gonna learn when we uh, actually go over IPV6 next week. And that is you can have more than one IPV6 address on a single interface. Um, in this case, though, we've got a link local, which is only for that link local. Now I'm very lazy, so I hit the up arrow a couple times and go back, and now I'm gonna configure gig 000. And again, I'm very lazy. And as long as you don't mess up, you can just bounce around like this. And you can easily do your configs without having to retype a whole bunch of stuff. All right, now this is where you have to be a little careful because when you're doing IPv6 addresses, it's easy to make a mistake. So gig 000 ACAD colon colon one. All right, now I'm gonna do a do right and we should be good to go. Now let's try to actually ping now from PCA to PCB. All right, so I'm gonna ping 192.168. Um, I'm on A, A is one three, I'm going to zero three, zero dot three. And look, we get a reply. So what's happening now, if I go back over to this router, check this out, do show IP route, you'll notice that I have in my routing table for this router, I have directly connected the network of 192.168.0.0 and the network of 192.168.1.0. So when this PC tries to ping 192.168.0.3, it realizes that is not on the network that it is on, which is the 1.0 network. So it sends it to the default gateway. The router takes that apart, looks at it, figures out it's destined for the 0.3 our zero network, 192.168.0 network, forwards it out gig 000 over to PCB, PCB responds. Likewise, I should be able to ping IPv6 if I have not butchered the IPv6 addresses. BB8 colon ACAD colon colon three. There it goes. So now I have IPv4 and IPv6 across both of these. So at this point I built, uh, the router is working. The only thing I haven't configured is the switch. Questions about what I've done so far? We took what we learned in our packet tracer, we built upon it and we moved a little bit forward from that. Okay, so that's what we're doing in here. So let's go ahead and configure the switch real quickly. Uh, again, same commands pretty much. Um, so enable uh, config T, no IP domain. On some of these, you'll notice it's dash lookup. Some of it, it's space lookup. Depends on the iOS version and on the device you're working on. So always remember, if you don't know, just use the question mark. Um, add a device name. So uh, host name. I'm just going to call this SW1. Um, we're going to do... Uh, I've already turned that off. Configure activate VLAN one, default gateway. All right, so they're actually wanting us to do a real simple config on the switch. So I'm gonna go in here and do interface VLAN one. Remember, we can't put an IP address on a port on the route on the switch. Don't worry about that, no switch port command. If y'all know that command, uh, if you work in the industry and know about no switch port, we teach you that later. We don't teach that right now. Um, but let's do an IP address. 192.168.1.2.255.255.255.0. Do a no shut. All right. And then we'll type exit and come back here. And we need a default gateway so we can get out of this network. And that would be the uh, router port closest to us. Now, what should happen is actually, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, just for. for my own, oh, went too far. For myself here, I'm gonna show you something that's pretty cool. Let's do line con zero, login synchronous, log uh, password of Cisco, login, line VTY 015, cause there's 16 VTY ports uh, are on a switch by default. We'll do password of Cisco, login, and then do right. Now watch this, this is really neat. I'm from PCB, I'm actually gonna take and run PuTTY. 
And I'm going to just say yes. If you need to run putty, just tell it yes. I'm going to actually tell net over to 192.168.1.2, which is the IP address of the switch. Should prompt me for that password, which is Cisco. And you'll notice that if I typed it in right, which I didn't, I'm now in the switch. So I am actually right now telnetting from PCB through the router over to the switch and have access to it. Now, real world, I would never telnet. I would use SSH. We will learn how to do that later on in another module in this particular uh, class. But at this point, what we have done now is we have built a fully functional basic network. And I showed you the IPv4 route here. I could also do a do show IPv6 route. You'll see that we're directly connected to two different IPv6 networks. The ACAD colon colon zero and the ACAD one. Actually, ACAD zero and ACAD one. All right. And so we have built a fully functional network. Questions about this? Any questions? Oh, I, got, I had something in chat. I'm sorry, I didn't see that pop up. Okay, no problem. Any other questions? Because I want to show you another packet tracer in our lab here that, that causes issues with students. So I want to make you aware of this. Go ahead and get rid of this. First off, one thing you're going to learn, this, this packet tracer right here, this um, basic device configuration. When you download this one and open it up, one of the things that you're going to notice immediately is you get one of three different variations on this particular packet tracer. And you don't really know which one you've been given, except by looking at the, let me get this pulled up here. So when your students go to do this lab, or do this packet tracer, they're going to be given this this lab and you're going to say okay so we've got this and here's our diagram so it gives us our basic information here you know we've got the 10 10 10 network on this side we got the 10 10 11 network on this side and we've got our two different um networks for ipv6 so really the only thing they've done differently is they've added in uh two different switches and one of them you can get to and one of them you can't can you get to class a but you can't get to class b the issue is this, it tells you to set the IPv4 and V6 addresses for the switches according to the addressing table. Well, there's nothing in the table because this packet tracer doesn't give you the table. So what you have to do and what you will have access to as an instructor. Now, what you can do is you can kind of figure out what you need it to be because you know it's gotta be a 10, 10, 10 uh, IP address to go on the switch over here, 10, 10, 10, 11, and a DBA ACAD 200 to be on the switch. But if you want, and what you'll be able to do once you especially are fully uh, certified, is you're going to be able to come in here and you're going to have access to under resources, course resources. You're going to have access to introduction to networks, 7.02 available resources, and you will have instructor packet tracer source files. And you'll be able to go in here and look and say, okay, for this lab manual, so here's an instructor lab manual, it will tell you what IP addresses it's looking for. And you're gonna to have to tell your students, all right, for our scenario, we are looking at scenario, the 10, 10, 10 scenario. So we're looking at scenario number one, I believe. Nope, not number one, number three. Yep, scenario number three. So you're going to have to tell your students, OK, on this chart that we've got for our lab for the switch, all right, the switch needs to have um, the IP address of 10, 10, 10, 11, 100 for switch two. And without that, you really cannot get 100% on this particular lab. But this lab two, we just walk through. We're going to go in, name the router in the second switch. So we're going to go to the router. We're going to name it. And you'll see that the name should be college. So we'll go to command line. We hit here. En config t 
host name, college. Okay, we should be getting, when we do that, we should get some points. And we got 2%. And go on through, use Cisco as an exact password for all lines. So line con zero, password Cisco. So we get 4%, log in, we get 6%. And I'm gonna do login synchronous, even though it doesn't ask you for that, just cause it helps you. And we do line VQI 04. So we're just, again, reinforcing the commands we've already learned. This is the third time you've seen these commands. You've seen it in two packet tracers and you've seen it in a hands-on lab. So you're going to see this more than likely on the Cisco certification exam. And I know you're gonna see it on your hands-on final for this class for me. Any questions about these labs? How do I learn all these commands? Anybody? Here's what I like to do. For me, when I'm learning these commands, I'm actually gonna stop sharing for just a second. When I'm learning these commands, here's exactly what I do. Change my virtual background to nothing so we can, okay. I actually create a notebook. So I get a notebook, just like a regular notebook. And I sit down and I say, okay, for routers. Okay, so I'm going on a router and I write down the mode it's in. So config, and I put down host name, and then I actually put in, so I actually create myself a little chart. My handwriting's horrendous, y'all know that. But I make me a chart and I go down through and say, okay, how do I set the host name? How do I do this? How do I do that? You also have folks, again, inside of the resource that I have given you. So we talked a little bit about this resource, if you're having any trouble, by the way, with um, Safari Online, we had an issue and have had some issues with it saying your account is disabled. If you have that issue, open up an incognito window and log in to Safari, okay? Um, but if you are actually inside of our Safari, here's one of the cool things you can find inside of Safari here in this O'Reilly database. Remember, you got to click. It took me on in, um, but you go to the play, oops, your playlist. And under here, we've got a CCNA playlist. And here is one of the neatest things. I, I, I joke about I'm stealing it from me, but portable command reference. So you can go right here and this command reference will tell you anything you need to know. So you wanna know how to do, um, let's see, I help commands. How do you configure last banning tree? Let me go down here and find something we just did. Setting a host name. Click there and it gives you all the commands. How do you reset uh, a switch? It tells you how to do it. Setting a host name, configure terminal, gives you the mode, set your host name. So this is just a book that is nothing more than a series of passwords. Uh, password series of commands and syntaxes and how to do them. So this is basically the kind of little notebook that I build for myself so that I have it, or I had to do in the beginning when I was first learning these commands. Now that I've been doing this for a long time, I'm, it's almost like a programming language. I can almost figure it out, uh, even if I don't know many times. So make sure you make use of that if you want to. It's under our Riley, it's under our playlist, and it's that command under, under SCC materials, SCC CCNA materials right here. It's that portable command reference by Scott Empson. Okay. All right. Any questions? Those were the two packet tracers and the lab I wanted to show you today. So um, I don't have anything else. Gentlemen, I hope this has been useful. Next week, I will do some labs on um, the subnetting labs that we had uh, in Packet Tracer and also on our, um, our uh, net labs. You know, officially class ends
quote ends next week, but it's not for us. We're going to continue on meeting on Mondays um, up until our CCNA 2 class begins on July 27th. Um, so we've got another good while that we're going to be all working together as you work to go through and complete your CCNA 1 materials. Any questions? Change my background back. On a, I love space. Can you go through the IPv6 uh, setup on the router? Uh, yeah, just... definitely. Yeah, we can do that. Let me close this. Let me share my screen. All right, so we want to do, go back into NetLabs and find my NetLabs tab. All right, so here's a router. Okay, let me go ahead and just erase it real quick. I'm going to erase, I'm going to do a control Z. Uh, erase start. Do a quick reload. It takes just a few minutes to reload, but let's let it reload. Um, and while that is doing that, I will actually pop open packet tracer. That's too small. Let's let this reload real quick and then we'll do it. Okay. We'll take but a minute for it to reload. What we're wanting to do when we do um, pull up Notepad here. The good news about um, IPv6 versus IPv4 is typically if we're going on a router, so let's say it's R1, R1, we're in global config, okay, and we want to, oh, where's my hashtag? Lost it. Okay, and we want to go into an interface, we would type interface. And then whatever it happens to be, I'm going to say gigabit zero, zero, zero. Okay. That would take us into uh, sub configuration mode, which would be um, interface sub configuration mode, config dash if. All right. Now, once here, if we want to put an IPv4 address in, we type typically just put in IP address and put in our IPv4 address. If we want an IPv6 address, we type IPv6 address. And then we put in our IPv6 address, whatever it happens to be. It could be 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD colon, and I'm going to use A. That would be, by the way, subnet 10 colon colon 1 slash 64. And that sets a, what's called a, and I'm going to talk about uh, the types of IPv6 addresses next week. But that sets a global routable IPv6 address on the interface. You then have to set a link local. Now you don't have to set a link local because it is possible for a router to uh, assign itself one using a process called EUI 64, but we don't do that. We typically set our link local addresses. So we'll go back in here, IPv6 address, FE80. All link local addresses start with FE80 up to FEFF, I believe it is, um, colon, colon one, and then use command link local and that is that says this is the address to use if you're talking to devices only on gig zero 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 and then we would go over and um i'm actually just going to do we'll be sitting here and we can do config dash if now i can jump over to interface gig zero zero one you don't have to back out you don't have to back all the way back and then go in. If you did this, it would actually just jump over to that interface, even though you wouldn't really see a change in the um, in the prompt. And then I could just do this. I could do, okay, so on this side, I'm gonna use a different, I'm gonna use B. I'll do B, colon, colon one. And then we're gonna do, this would be exactly the same because that address is only significant on that one link. So you can use the same link local on two separate interfaces. Now, all this is grand except for one thing. If you do this and forget one step, you're in trouble. So I'm going to I'm going to assume that we're going to now going to do we're going to type exit, which drops us back to here. Config. You have to put in IPv6 unicast dash routing. 
that turns on the ability to route using IPv6. By default, that's not turned on. So what I can actually do here, I can actually take, let's try this. Oops, wrong place. I can actually come in here now and let's, it's still waiting, it's still rebooting. And we're gonna apply this to the to this particular network. And I'm actually gonna go in here and um, I'm gonna get rid of the, I'm actually gonna get rid of the IP addresses that I set on here and let them, let them get dynamic IPv6 addresses and show you that, because that's, that's kind of neat to show. So it's gonna change my IPv6 setup. Actually, I'll change them both. So we'll do, but dynamic, we're going to do a dynamic IPv6 address too. Everything's going to be dynamic. So now we're going to use Slack or what's called stateless address auto configuration to get an IP address on this one. We're going to do the same over here. Yep. It's funny how uh, every time you close putty on these machines, it, it causes it to say, oh, it didn't close correctly. I'm getting ready to redeploy all of these. Uh, all the machines, uh, all the, the PCs anyway. See if I can't fix that error we're having with DHCP problems. So all I'm doing right now is just setting the, the PCs back to dynamic IP addressing on both IPv4 and IPv6. Although I really didn't need to, didn't need to do it IPv4, I just need to do it IPv6, but. So one more second. Dynamic, dynamic, all right. And so we're gonna see now, so we're gonna take this, this router and we're gonna apply this to it. So let's go to R1, oh, cancel. I do not want to go into setup mode because I'm not gonna walk through, a, it's a basic setup mode that, that's just waste time. So all I'm gonna do on this router now is just set our IP addresses. So many times, um, by the way, this is something that's kind of neat. If you've never known it, you actually can turn off um, show IP, show IP protocol. See how stuff's in the way there? That's why you fix that show IP. Right. Fix this. Now, see how I keep getting stuff in my typing? I fix that by doing this. Find con zero. Logging synchronous. Now I won't have that issue anymore. But you can actually turn off no IP. You can actually turn off routing, IP routing. Um, if you do that, uh, obviously IPv4 won't work. That's why though we have to do IPv6 unicast routing. That turns on the ability to route IPv6 across the router. So I just did that first. So let's go to interface gig 000. We're gonna put an IPv6 address uh, 2001 colon db8 colon acad colon a colon colon one slash 64 ipv6 address we're going to put in a link local fe80 colon colon one now you have to specify that as link local and we're going to go up arrow a couple times gig001 up arrow a couple times because i'm lazy Put that a B, or I'm efficient. That's what I am. I'm saying I'm efficient. Do that. Now at this point, I can go ahead and do show IPv6 int brief, and you will see that I've got A subnet A on gig 000, subnet B on 001. So I'm doing do right. And what we should be able to do now is go over to PCA, and actually let's do full size, actual size. By doing IP config slash all, we should see, notice that we have an IP address, 2001db8 ACAD colon one, it's depreciated. That should actually, let's do, let's do a release renew.
but I fell on IPv4. Now let's go back over here and check this one. Hey, Kelly, I have a question. Shoot. Say, for instance, on uh, interface gig 000, right? Mm -hmm. so you have a link local uh, specified. And on gig 000, you also have a link specified, and both of them are the same. For instance, if 000 interface link local was two and 001 interface link local was one, would they still communicate? Okay, let me let me let me draw this out real quick, if if you don't mind. Right. All right. So let's. So you're saying, if I had a single router, okay, and on this side I had a link local address of fe eight eighty colon colon two, and on this side I had fe eight zero colon colon one. Is that what correct. you're saying? Yes. That would work fine. That okay. would work completely fine. Now, what happens is this. Typically, what we do, though, is say we've got this router here. So, And let's say it's connected to another router. So this is router 2, so R1 and R2. We make everything on R1 FE80 colon colon 1 for link local. So that way, if I'm connected to four or five different routers, mm -hmm. all of these are FE80 colon colon one because we know that's router one okay all right now over here on router two all of its interfaces has to be something it could be fe80 colon colon two okay but now here's the crazy thing you could just as easily also have another router right here and this could be fe80 colon colon one these link local addresses are not routable they are only important on the link that they are part of. So okay. okay. It does right. not matter. I mean, like I said, you could come over here. At, that's FE8. This, this link right here could be on this router right here, FE80 colon colon one. As long as no two devices on the same link have the same link local address, it'll work. But to keep ourselves sane, and to make sure we can troubleshoot our networks better, the accepted practice is we make the link local addresses the same on all the interfaces on a router. And okay. make it make it unique to that router so that every router is different. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, that helps a little bit. Okay. So um, let's see what we got here. We got, let's see if this thing come up with its we got our right IP address here. I still want to do ACAD one. Um, one of the things I have learned about I, uh, Windows, especially uh, Windows 10 and all Windows operating systems, is sometimes when you change from static to dynamic and dynamic to static, um, you can end up with some weird, weird items that happen. So first I'm gonna go is check in here, make sure that I did in fact remove is set to automatic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable this interface. All right, and I'm going to enable it. And so now if I do an IP config, it has no, it's a link local. Notice how it created its own link local address. It's got FE80 colon colon, and then this is a 64-bit uh, a, a uh, device ID. We'll talk about that. Let's see if it gets itself a slack. Eventually, it will. Should grab an IP address off of the, from the router itself. Gig zero zero zero. It's on B. Is on A, and then the other one's on B. Okay, so this one should be eventually showing itself on A. Let's 
and Windows is being cantankerous. We did this one, try it again. What should be happening right now is these PCs should be getting themselves an IP address through a process called Slack or stateless auto configuration. And they should be pulling an IP address in the A or B subnet, depending on which side they're on. So let's disable this. And that subnet is defined on the router, Kelly? Correct. Yep. Because that's defined. Basically, what they will do is they'll look right here and they'll see the router will tell them that, that if you're on this interface, you're part of the 2008 DB1 ACAD colon A subnet. If you're on zero one, you're part of the 2001 DB8 ACAD colon B. Let me make, oops, make sure I did do IPv6 unicast routing. Okay, and let's do, oh, no, that's why it's not working, look. Okay, folks, I just got bit in the rear end by exactly what I told you to be careful of during the uh, my configuration. Notice how when I re when I erased the startup config on the oh, router shut and rebooted it, exactly, they're shut down. So let's do this, int gi. That's a very good, I'm so glad that happened because it shows you that sometimes the simplest things are the things that get you. And I just didn't pay attention when I was doing my show IP int brief. Okay, now gig 000 is zero, zero, up, 001 zero, zero, is up. All right, now let's go see if we can't get it to pick up addresses, which it will here in just a second. It may take it just a little bit, but it will do it. I have faith in it. There it is. So there's an A, it's got an A address, 2001 DBA ACAD A. And then the opposite side should be B. And there it is. So if you turn your interfaces on and you've got them configured correctly uh, through a process called stateless address auto configuration, the devices will send out uh, an ICP, ICMP version six um, router um, discovery and say, hey, um, what network am I on? What prefix am I on? And then the router comes back and says, you're on this subnet, this 2001 DB8 ACAD colon B. And then the device will create a random, Windows does this, creates a random um, host address. And that's so you can't be tracked easily. But you'll see now this is on A. This is on, I should have done the other way around, but either way, this is on A, this is on B, so that you can see that the it did work. So does that make sense? Let me show you one more thing here. I'll show you the actual let's drop out. Um, so, so my only question is, my only question, and this is what been killing me by IPv6 is just say for instance on our local network, right? So are you saying Slack will automatically sign a IPv6 IP address? So us as administrators, we don't have to create any type of networks or nothing to that nature. Nope, nope you do not. And see, so that's what I've been killing myself with, Kelly. I've been now, trying to here, out. Here's the issue, though. Here's the issue. Uh -huh. You'll notice the only thing it gave out was an IP address. That's correct. And a default gateway. It does have an IP address and a default gateway. So technically, I should be able to from right here. Okay. I'm going to pull this. Uh, I'm going to undock this, folks, so I can just pull it over to the other side and look at it a little bit easier. So I can, I can see it. But I should be able to from here, from PCA ping 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD colon. And this is A colon 35CC colon. FF79 colon FB2 colon 9396. Now it worked. So I was able to ping from PCA to ping PCB. Okay. All right. That worked fine.
But here's the problem. I don't have a DNS. So there's no DNS set up because it wasn't handed out. And I, that's going to be a major issue. So what you have to do is you either have to manually then assign DNS to each one of these, or we're going to learn about there's a thing called Slack with stateless DHCP, which says it will still give out this address to your host. But then it says it's got a little, uh, a little uh, flag in there that says, now, but I want you to go over to this DHCP server to get your DNS information and any other information you need. Now, oh, okay. the DHCP server is not handing out addresses. The router is still using Slack to give out the prefix, but it will tell it where to go get its DNS information. And then there's a third option, which is called Slack with stateful DHCP, which when this host boots up and looks for a router to give it a, a prefix, it actually says, nope, I'm not going to do that. You go talk to the DHCP server, and the DHCP server will then hand out a full you know, address prefix, D DNS information, and any other options, just like we do with IPv4. The beauty of this is with the way it's set up, you can, re you can actually renumber or re-address your IPv6 networks, and all you have to change is the IP address on your router interfaces and reboot your PCs, and boom, they'd be good to go. So IPv6 has got some really, really neat features on it. It's also stupidly dangerous from a security standpoint because by default, IPv6 is turned on on all these devices. They're being given globally unique routable addresses if you're not careful. And so a lot of it's being used for some back backdoor uh, cybersecurity hijinks. Um, so because it's, they're, they're handing out addresses. If you don't need D8, if you don't need IPv6 on your network, don't forget, the most important thing you can do is go in here under your Ethernet, okay? Go to your adapter settings, and all you have to do is under your properties, and you can do this with a global domain policy or there's all different ways of doing it. Just uncheck right there and click OK, and that will turn off IPv6 on your host. Then you don't have to worry about somebody trying to use IPv6 to do tunneling or anything of that nature. Man, that makes so much sense. I was killing myself trying to figure out how can I be, uh, IPv6 be broken up like we do IPv4. But now it makes sense, Kelly. I, listen, I'm there now. Okay. <laughs> well, like and I'll tell you what, when we go over the module, I'm going to go over the module on Monday. This, when I go over that on Monday, all of this, you'll be like, wow, okay, that really does make sense. Um, so that, that'll help on Monday too. Okay. Excellent. All right, well, everyone, that's all I've got for today. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, let me know. Um, otherwise, I will see everybody on Monday, and we will uh, move forward. One thing before you go, Kelly. Shoot, go ahead. Yep. We've got a packet tracer. Um, it's a okay. 10 packet tracer dealing with... Um, one of them is dealing with IPv6, and another one is just dealing with uh, ICMP and trace route. Okay. Go ahead. You cannot access one of the routers, you know, to make sure that, um, like we said, one of the interfaces not shut down or the IP address on that interface is correct. Which one is it? Do you know? I, I have it in my notes because I've been just trying to catch up. So I've been zooming through them. So okay. I, I email you with Email me. me. Okay. Email me and I'll take a look at it and we'll, we'll discuss it. Okay. Sounds good. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.